FlossTube. I'm Annie and I'm the Proper Stitcher and this is FlossTube number 12. Thank you so much for joining me today. If this is your first time here, welcome. And if you are returning, thank you so much for coming back and for subscribing and all of your um, wonderful comments, your words of encouragement, your thumbs up, all of those uh, kind words are very much appreciated. Um, this is a channel where I like to talk about cross stitch and quilting and um, a little bit of antiquing and um, a lot of other things along the way. So welcome. Let's get right into it. It has been a busy week for me, um, not so much with stitching, but with having everybody home. It's still an adjustment for me. Um, my daughter is uh, 17. She is a rising senior and she is in the throes of all of the college essay writing and, and college tours and ACTs and all of those fun things that go along with preparing for your senior year of high school. My son is a rising sophomore and he runs cross country and track and they just started their cross country practice, which means um, he has to be at practice at 7.30 in the morning, which is a lot of early mornings for us. Um, and I usually take him and when I do, I it, his practice is too far away from home. So I stay in the car and stitch or walk or do some work that I need to catch up on, answer emails, that sort of thing. And so um, that's been going on this week and just chores around the house, all those fun things. It has been a beautiful week here in East Tennessee. The humidity is low, the temperatures are lower than usual. We had some rain at the beginning of the week and I've been enjoying sitting outside at night with my husband and either eating dinner or having a glass of wine or stitching, just really taking advantage of the nice weather. He actually took the kids out today. Um, I'm not sure where they are, but they went out to enjoy the weather just so I can be home alone and um, get caught up on some things. And the dogs are even gone today. They're getting their baths. So I have the whole house to myself, which never happens around here. So, but let's just jump right into everything. Um, you know, I have a lot to go over with you and I, I think it's fun to just talk as we go, right? So let's do that. I wanted to share um, a quilt that I made about a year ago for my daughter. And thank you all for the, the comments about my, I jokingly said last week that I call myself a lazy quilter. And I meant that in jest. What I meant is I like to use pre-cut fabrics and a lot of you gave me a more positive spin on how to phrase that. Um, one of you said that you like to look at pre-cuts as a starter kit or um, a quilt kit and not being lazy. And I did not mean that at all in a, in a bad way. I just enjoy pre-cuts. Um, I just would rather spend more time sewing and getting a, getting a project um, finished than to spend a lot of time cutting. And so I really do enjoy pre-cuts. Um, and I also refer to my stack of whips that I haven't touched in a few weeks as my stack of shame. And I was kidding about that too. So you all gave me some great ideas on more positive things to say about them. So thank you for that. But I want to show you this quilt I made for my daughter a few years ago using charm squares. Um, I will link the video below of the tutorials I followed on this one. I used Melanie Ham's um, beginner quilt tutorials and it was wonderful to follow and to this day I still refer to those videos when I um, am doing a binding. She has a very simple technique for adding a binding. So let me show you this. I do not remember the the charm pack um, for this. It is from, like I said, a few years ago. But these, I think they were called Zen something, Zen chic or Zen squares. But I made this just using charm packs. And um, it was a lot of fun to make. I think I have a photo of it and I'll put it on my Instagram so you can see. And I can see where I made some mistakes. Like I really should not have put three of the same color squares together, but it's okay because it's a big piece. And when I, when I put the quilt together, it wasn't as big as I wanted it to be, so I add a border. I added two um, borders to it to give it a little bit more um, of a, a just a bigger shape. And then the back is the same as this border, and then the binding is this cute pink binding. And I use these um, quilt 
quilt tags to put on the back of my quilts and it says handmade. Let me see if you can see that. Here we go. Handmade by Annie Turner. And I put that on the back of all of my quilts. So, and I got those on Etsy and I'll link the shop below too. But this is a quilt I made for her um, using charm squares. So very easy, very beginner. You don't even have to do the borders if you just want to do the, the squares. And that is 90% of my quilts I make are made out of those charm squares. So while I'm standing, I want to show you something that a lot of you have asked about. And that is Humpty Dumpty. So Humpty Dumpty um, needs me to sew his hair back on. But Humpty Dumpty is my husband's, Matthew. I've got to fix that. Okay. So Humpty Dumpty was uh, made by Matthew's aunt, and her name is Sue Jean, but they call her Aunt Honey. And Matt's mom, it's her only sibling, and so it's his, his aunt on his mother's side. And when Matthew was a little boy, he was six, sick up until the age of six. Well, he was sick, but he, they didn't know what was wrong with him until on his sixth birthday, he was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. And so his aunt made him this Humpty Dumpty, and he is adorable. Look at his jumper, his outfit, 1970s, screams it, right? I mean, brown, the little flowers, so cute. So Humpty Dumpty needs some attention from me, so I will reattach his hair. But Humpty Dumpty has been in my sewing room Oh gosh, as long as I've had one. I, I had a little space down in the basement. If you've been following me, um, you've heard me talk about the basement. And so Humpty Dumpty was always with me down there. So I wanted to tell you a little bit about his story. And as we go through the weeks and as I get things in place, I'll pull out some things from my cabinet and share those with you too. But Humpty Dumpty is one of my favorites. So I'm going to put him back. And he just stays up there and he's fun to have around. So that, I just wanted to show you the quilt finish. Um, I did not have a cross stitch finish, but I did have a quilt finish. Um, I did get a very special gift. It, this is something else I finished. So I got a very special gift from my friend in the Netherlands. She and I have been stitching Summer at Cherry Hill together and, and uh, she has finished hers. Well, she sent me these pins from Just Another Button Company. And she said they ma they made her think of me with the tomato. There's a tomato, a spool of thread, and a flower. So cute. I have never had these pins, but I've always admired them. Well, when I went to an antique store with my daughter this week, she wanted to get out of the house and take a break from all that she's been doing. Uh, we went to the store in town, and it's called Nostalgia. And they specialize in vintage... Um, the, er, there's all these different booths inside of the, the facility and um, the their focus and theme is vintage, all things vintage, 1940s, 50s, 60s, 70s, but vintage, vintage Christmas, the, the Fiesta wear plates, you, you, if you can think it, they have it, they have it. Well, I found, I, I got these pins from uh, my friend Yoke and I wanted to do something with them. And I thought, oh, I'll just put them in my tomatoes. And then when we were in this store, I found this tomato cup. And it's just a coffee cup. And I found the, the cup. And I decided to make a pin cushion out of it so that I can put the tomatoes pins from Yolk. So I love how it turned out. So I decided to make a few more. <laughs> so I went down this rabbit hole. So I got the, the tomato cup. Then I went back and I got a salt and pepper shaker. And I made them into tomato, uh, pin cushions. So this is a watering can and this is a wheelbarrow. And they were supposed to be salt and pepper shakers or they are salt and pe pepper shakers. And I turned them into little pin cushions. Um, and I got the idea from Lori Holt. She made, um, she makes pin cushions out of vintage finds. And I watched some of her videos and I thought they were so cute. So I, I really should have stuffed this one a little bit more, but I'll link her video below where she shows you 
um, how to do those. So that might be something fun for me to pick up and do here and there, give as gifts, but um, it, it's nice to have a little break from cross stitching every once in a while. And, and I think this took maybe five minutes to make, but it, it certainly is cute and it's something I'll have on my table and I'll think of my special friend and, um, and just how wonderful this community is. I've never met her, but we met on Instagram and we message each other often. So thank you so much for that. And then I found while I was looking for things like that, I found this little pin cushion in there. Um, so I got him to go with my collection in my cabinet. So those were some antique finds I had this week and a few of the, the little, little finishes I had. So that was fun. What well, I am stitching my way through June. For those of you who have a calendar and you keep up with yours in some way, it's hard to believe that we are already on the 17th of June. So time goes by fast when we're having fun. So, um, okay, so let's get into my whips. I did not bring all my whips this time because I did not um, spend as much time on, um, I'm looking at them now, on four of my whips. So I didn't bring them to show you this time. So Butterfly Cloche did not get any love this week. Um, Clarissa Beaumont had to be set aside for a few days because I was working on Summer at Cherry Hill. My uh, Freedom Quaker is on pause for a few days. And my Tis the Season by Blackbird is also on pause. Just did not have enough time to stitch on all of my whips. That's probably the problem of me having such a big stack. But I did get a little bit of attention, give a little bit of attention to A Quaker Christmas. So this is A Quaker Christmas by from Bygone Stitches. And if you're, if you're following along, I am doing a stitch along with Artie at the Vintage Stitcher. And this is one of those stitch alongs that you can join anytime you want and you can stitch what you want and when you want and you can change the colors, just make it your own. But we started this at the beginning of the month and I had to rip out a lot that I did the other day, but I am uh, back on track. So I am stitching this on 36 count cream Edinburgh and somebody asked me about the cream. Um, all I know is what the store wrote down on the little tag and I bought this in 2017 and they wrote cream Edinburgh 36 count. I don't know who it's by. I don't know, um, anything more than that. Um, so it's more of a cream color. It's not white. It's cream. So I am stitching this on 36 count and I had all of this stitched and found a mistake and then had to rip it out. And this is my first Quaker sampler or Quaker uh, design to stitch. And one thing that I found that was a surprise, and I just discovered this, is you can be looking at a pattern and not realize some of the designs or motifs, what they are, until you start to stitch it. And what I mean by that is when I was looking at the, the paper pattern, you know, the, the pattern, I did not see these hearts in that motif. And then when I started stitching them, the heart started to come out and that just there was it was a fun surprise so I'm really excited to spend more time on this um, I would be a little bit further along but I did I you remember that um, pattern I showed you last week from luminous fiber arts I should pull it out again that might be my next sewing room or tomato um, Tuesday stitch but it's a bluebird and it says counting is hard well counting is really hard for me lately I've had to rip out so much over the last week, it's really frustrating, but that's part of it. We just take it as we can, and some days, some weeks are better than others, so I did. I had to rip all this out and start again, so counting was really hard for me this week, but I am using one strand over two because this is 36 count, so I'm using one strand of floss over two, and I'm using the called for colors on this, which are classic color works, yield gold, Cupid and balsam fur And I just love it. it. I just I'm so excited to have a community and a group who is willing to stitch this with me because it's a pretty big one um, And if you're new, this is I also like to show you my needle minders that I'm using with each one and this is a Christmas um, Zappy dots that I'm using so that is bygone stitches 
um, a Quaker Christmas. If you have already stitched a Quaker Christmas, some people are doing Quaker Christmas too. Do that, jump right in. Uh, the more the merrier. Um, I would love to see it. And if you decide to uh, share your post or share your photos, there is this hashtag and it is hashtag Quaker Christmas S-A-L. So, I, and I do, I check them every, every day to see what, what you all are working on. I'm just gonna put this over here. Okay, get that out of the way. Okay, my other um, big project that I'm working on, and I figured out my mistake on this one. This is, I didn't figure out my mistake. I figured out how to fix my mistake. Fruit of Plenty by Modern Folk Embroidery. And this is a yearly stitch along that he does, Jacob does every year. Um, he'll have a big piece where he sends out at the beginning of each month, the first of the month, a different um, section of the sampler. And in theory, you'll have your um, design finished by the end of the year. Well, we all know I'm behind on this one and that's okay because I love it all the same. But I, someone had recommended that I had mentioned to y'all that I've messed up where the berry placement is. I am off by about three or four um, rows on the berry columns. And someone said, just center the bird and then add berries to it. And so that's what I'm going to do. So I've got the bird in the right place and I'm going to fix, the, um, add some more berries to it. And I was so thrilled to get the bird done because it just kind of got me back in the groove on this one. Um, which I, I really was happy about because I, I like this design a lot and I love this, this linen. This is 32 count antique white Belfast linen. And I got a really big piece. It's much bigger than I need for the project, but it's really big. And I am just so glad that I am pushing through so I can get back on track. But I am using the, these two DMC colors. Um, because I love blue and I want this in my um, bedroom and I someone else had mentioned or a, uh, I think it was Nikki with Nikki's Notables she mentioned she's going to do this as a wedding sampler and I think I'm going to copy her and do the same thing since this was our 20th anniversary this past April this is going to be kind of like an anniversary sampler for us so I'll put our initials here but I'm using DMC 3750 and DMC 932 and I just love how it's turning out and this is my needle minder on this one I got this at a um, cross stitch retreat many years ago and I just love it so that is Fruit of Plenty by Modern Folk Embroidery all of his uh, designs are a PDF download he has a lot of options on his on his website and I'll link it below Okay, so I mentioned to you that while my son is running um, during his cross-country practice in the mornings, I bring something to stitch on usually, um, but it has to be something that I can see um, without a magnifier, And but I have my reader glasses on. But So I think this summer I'm going to catch up on my Prairie Schooler Santas. Last summer I did some Lizzie Kate uh, designs um, for Christmas, and so this year I'm going to work on my Prairie Schooler Santas. So I started this a few weeks ago when we went on vacation. So I pulled it back out. And so this is Prairie Schooler 2020, the annual Santa. And this is how much I've gotten done. I got a lot done on this this week. Um, so let's see, Monday and Tuesday is when I was stitching uh, because I did not take him, and Wednesday, I did not take him today. My husband took him today. Um, but I got the rest of his, his coat done, his scarf, his hat, the border. I finished the bunny. Um, and I got the little bitty candy cane, which I just love. So really all I have left to do is finish his face and do finish the word wind and do his, um, walking stick, just basically everything on this side. And I love these. Um, if you remember, uh, I mentioned this a few episodes ago, that I have all of the Prairie Schooler Santas. And it, it, was a, it took a while to find the older ones. And when I got them all uh, together, 
I called just I called Cross Stitching Crafts in Johnson City and talked to Amy and said I want to stitch all the Prairie Schooler Santas and um, she ordered me the called for fabric which is uh, Davos um, linen or fabric which is a lot like an Ada but I mean not a lot but it's I guess I mean, well actually it's probably more like an even weave um, it's not my favorite to stitch on and if I had to do it all over again I would stitch these on probably even weave uh, or Lugana or something like that but because I already have all the squares she ordered them for me cut them surged them got it all ready for me so I want to keep them all the same and especially since I have a stack of this I I'm just gonna use everything I have but I have everything ready to go. I have them all in a bag. This is one of my go-to projects when I'm in the car because I can see it very easily. I don't need any anything special to see this. So it'll be fun to get caught up on these. Um, I think I'm gonna start finishing the stack that I have in July and do like a Christmas in July finishing parade. <laughs> um, and I think Hobby Lobby, somebody said Hobby Lobby starting to get their Christmas in. So maybe I can find some Christmas um, inspiration to finish some of these. So look for more of these to come this summer, but that is the Prairie Schooler Annual Santa 2020. Super cute. Okay, so on Fridays, I like to stitch what's called Friendship Friday. And so I use the hashtag with Kim Gavlick at Stitch Etc. We use the hashtag Friendship Friday. So I have been stitching Plum Street Samplers, A Friend Loveth. A Friend Loveth at All Times. This is how it looks like this. But I turn it like this so you can see it. And it has three little girls on it. And, and I like to think that it's Kim and Annie and Kay. We're all on this little piece. So um, I have been stitching this on 32 count graceful gray linen. And this past Friday, I got these words done. So, I will continue to work on this. Um, it's super cute. And I love all the, the colors, but this is my needle minder for it. This is These are Flamingo Toes um, needle minders. Super cute. I love the enamel. They have fun designs. You can order them online. Uh, I've seen them in cross-stitch stores or um, needlework stores. And then here are all the, the called for colors. So... Super quick, and this really should be a quick stitch. It's not very big, but I only work on it for a little bit on Fridays. So hopefully I'll get that one done soon. Okay, so you saw my post on Tuesday for Tomato Tuesday. Summertide Blessings by Plum Street Samplers. I am making some really good progress on this. I got a lot done on this on Tuesday. So... I am stitching this on 32 count, 32 count Stormy Night Belfast linen. And this is this has become my favorite linen. But since I saw y'all last, I got the rest of the girls stitched and I made the color change on the I made these red instead of brown. Um what color red is this? This is chili pepper. And I changed her buttons that were supposed to be black to blue. I wanted her outfit to be red, white, and blue. Um, and I so I finished the, this tomato and the vine, and I started on the bird. It is a fun stitch, very whimsical. So, summertide blessings. And I'm using, of course, a tomato needle minder on that one. Um, I just love Plum Street Sampler designs. Um, I, I love a lot of designs. I mean, let's here be kidding, right? But I really like their patterns. Um, Paulette does a really good job with not only the, the creative aspect of her designs, but then a lot of thought goes into the actual paper part, the, the, the design itself, the pattern itself. They're easy to read. The um, symbols are easy, easy to read. They're big enough. I don't have to strain my eyes to see. Um, just, a, just a joy to stitch. So uh, she has been, become one of my, my new favorites um, and I enjoy stitching, stitching all of her pieces. 
So, my big one that I've been working on a lot this week, I am just really wanting to finish this one because I just love it. This is Summer at Cherry Hill by Brenda Gervais of With Thy Needle and Thread. And I've been stitching this for quite a while and I'm stitching it on 32 count vintage country mocha. And I'm using two, all of these I'm using that I've mentioned except for the Quaker Christmas, I'm using two strands over two. Um, anything higher than a 32 count, I, I use, 36 and higher, I'll use a one strand. A 32 and below, like 28, 32, I'll use two strands. Um, so, this is my progress on her. So, I got the girl done. She's all stitched up. Oh, I forgot to show you a picture of my grandmother. Um, I will, after I film today, I will take a new photo because I haven't posted a new photo yet. And I'll put the photo of my grandmother next to it. Um, I still haven't figured out how to insert photos. And um, it's, I'm having a hard time syncing my laptop an iPad with YouTube. It, it's for some, so I had to do everything from my phone. So this is Summer at Cherry Hill. Back to this. <laughs> um, I finished her dress. I am starting the leaves at the top. And next up will be the um, all the bees on this side and the pomegranate bush. Or the, yeah, I think those are pomegranates. And then the grass at the bottom. So much fun. I am really enjoying this. So I'm really trying to get her finished. Um, this is my needle minder. It's a cherry. And I um, I just love it. I love her face. Look at, look at her face. It's just so precious. So I will um, hopefully make more progress on this. But I worked a lot on her on... Um, all weekend and I worked on her all that they, she was the only thing I worked on Saturday Sunday and Monday I did not work on any other project but but this one and I don't do that very often I sometimes like to rotate a couple of projects a day but I really just want to get her finished um, it'll be bittersweet because I've enjoyed stitching her but I, I want I want her finished and I want her framed and I want to see her so um, it's, it's been a lot of fun. So, uh, those are all of my whips that I have this week, um, that I were, was actively working on. And, um, you know, it, it's, it's just been a lot of fun. I, I was very tempted to kit up another, um, patriotic piece since I finished Henpeck last week. And I talked myself out of it because I have enough going on. So, Maybe that's another reason I'm really trying to finish finish her so I I can reward myself with a new a new whip. <laughs> so let's go through some haul. Um so let's see. I don't have a lot of haul this week. I know that's hard for all of us to believe, but it's the truth. Okay. I actually, I, I got the gift from Yoke. I got the pin um, cushions and a sweet note. And then I got this from a previous winner, Brenda. She sent me a sweet letter. Um, thank you, Brenda. That was very nice. Um, so, I got, finally got, woohoo, I got some wash drops from, I forgot to take them out. I ordered these from LaDonna at Sampling of Memories. And I feel like I have really rewarded myself with these because I've been wanting them for a long time. So I bought three. There's one. Here we go. There's one. And this one's really sweet. It has a sampler on it, a sampling, a sampler house. So that is one that I ordered from her. And I'll link her Etsy shop below. Um, these have a business card on them too. I don't think I can get that glare just right. I need to still figure out that glare. This one, I love chickens. So this is a rooster. And maybe now I can have my um, floss organized in my project bags. And this one is, oh, I, lo I love Santa Claus. Um, at Christmas, I will do a home tour, but I have Santa Clauses everywhere. And it's funny. It makes me think of my grandmother. She would say Santa Claus. Um, but I have Santa Clauses everywhere. 
and I love old world Santas and primitive Santas. Um, so I got an old world Santa. So thank you so much for um, making so many beautiful floss drops, LaDonna. So this is Sampling of Memories. I'll link her Etsy shop below. So those came in the mail. Um, I got this kit, not the kit. I got the floss and the pattern for um, Priscilla and Chelsea's so or Stitching with the Housewives Queen Bee Bakery. And I just loved this one, This uh, all the colors for summer. And I've got some B already done. Um, B uh, cups and um, a tea kettle and a honey dish. So I just, I know what I want to do with all of these. And so this is super pretty. And I got the, the floss to go with it. I got this from Annabella's on uh, Etsy. And I, she also has a floss tube channel. So I'll link her shop below as well. So I've got that. I was so excited and jumping up and down that I was able to get a Stitch Posse floss book from Stitch Folk on Instagram and Etsy. I will link her shop below too. She does wonderful project bags. They're extremely hard to get sometimes because everybody wants them, but I was able to get this floss keep book and you can put your needles here they have little pockets in here. Here's her business card. It's Stitch Folk Project Bags and Accessories for Stitchers. And um, I will link her shop below. But it has a little magnetic close. So adorable and I just love this. This is so cute. So, got that. And for my uh, Tomato Tuesday um, adventures, <laughs> I have Queen of the Needle by Brenda Gervais. And I got all the floss for that. They had everything but Jaybird, the blue. So I need to get that. And then I ordered from Delaney Wood, Delaney Wood's Treasures. This is a wonderful designer that I've had the pleasure to meet. Her name is T. Maloon, uh, Teresa Maloon, but I she call, people call her T. Um, this is a beautiful patriotic needle book, and she has an Etsy store, but this is an actual pattern. This is not a PDF download, and so you get a beautifully um, well thought out and good good quality design a nice cardstock very thick wonderful directions on how to finish the needle book so thank you so much for sending that over i will link her shop below too but that's delaney woods treasures and she has so many beautiful designs on her shop in her shop and then last one i got from artie the vintage stitcher I didn't even know that she made project bags. She makes project bags, she finishes for people, she quilts, but she made uh, project bags for our Quaker Christmas Stitch Along. So I bought a project bag from her and so cute. I'm gonna keep the Quaker Christmas in here, but nice and big, perfect size, and she put Christmas fabric on the inside. But with this, she also sent some vintage patterns. So she sent uh, by Dawn Bradford Sheepish Designs, Wabbit, and it's spelled with a W, Wabbit. That's how I used to say it when I was little. Bent Creek, Waiting for Santa. And she sent me Ooh La La, Scissors Kitten Fall by JBW Designs. So thank you so much, Artie. And that is all of my whips and haul and gifts and all those fun things. Um, I have some exciting news. Uh, I'm so excited. Uh, next week, I we're going on a college tour. Um, that 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 is also exciting. But when I get back from that, um, I am meeting Kim Gavlick in Greenwood, Indiana. Um, to do some retreat prep work. I've, I've told you all, we're, she's hosting a retreat at the end of September uh, and the Stitching with the Housewives, Priscilla and Chelsea, 
they are the uh, designers that are um, our special guest for the retreat. So Kim and I are going um, next week uh, for about five days, four or five days, to get prep work together and organized for the retreat. And while we're there, we're going to visit all the needlework stores in the area. So these are the ones we're going to go see. I don't know what days we're going because I'm trying to figure out the hours that they're open and um, what days are best and geographically where we're going to be on what days. But we're going to see there are four um, in the area. We're four. Can you imagine living in an area with four needlework stores nearby or within a driving dis you know short driving distance? That 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 might be dangerous for me, but it sounds like just wonderful. Um, okay, so we're going to see per six going to visit Persnickety Stitcher, um, Always in Stitches, Fancy Works, and House of Stitches. Um, all are in Indiana. We are going to be in Greenwood, Indiana, which is where the retreat is. Um, but these four stores, uh, some are 20 minutes away, some are 40 minutes away, and I think House of Stitches is about an hour away. So I'm really excited about that. Um, I'm excited to help Kim get things rolling with the retreat and to just kind of give us an idea of restaurants and things to recommend to some of the attendees. But to go to that many cross-stitch stores, and I think she even said we might go to a fabric store. So we'll see. Um, it, it'll be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to it. So um, I'll let you know how that goes. So with that being said, I'm not sure what day I'm going to film or record, but I'm definitely going to have a video next week, my regular video, but I don't, it'll probably be on Friday um, when I meet her. I'll, I'll take some time on Friday and, and film a, a regular video. And then after I visit those stores, I will, sh I'll do a special video of my haul. Um, both of those videos will be from the hotel room. So um, if, if you see that, you, you'll understand why they're a little different than my usual videos. So, yay, look, look for that. Okay, I wanna do some floss tube shout outs. Um, as you know, I like to give a little shout out to some floss tubers. Um, the floss tube community has been wonderful to me. Um, so many floss tubers out there and uh, everybody has something special to bring to their channel and everybody's been so supportive. We email each other, we share each other's uh, ideas, we um, just encourage each other to continue doing this because we all have different reasons why we like doing floss tube videos. But I like to give little shout outs because I know we all like to watch different shows and sometimes it's hard to find um, some of these channels. So I found Made by Michelle McGraw and I'll link all of these below, but Made by Michelle McGraw she's been around for a while. Um, I can't remember how many floss tubes she has, but her finishing is perfection, and she always has beautiful projects that she's working on, small projects, and she, she makes just the perfect finishes. Um, so, Michelle, made by Michelle McGraw. The other one is, and she's not new to cross stitch, her, it's Judy with JBW Designs. I did not know she had a channel. And she commented on my video last week when I showed you her, um, the new patterns I got for Halloween from JBW Designs from Cross Stitch and Crafts. And I was so excited to see that she has a cross stitch, uh, a floss, floss tube channel. So check out JBW Designs. And then the third one is the sampler girl, Tanya. And she is a designer. And of course, uh, a beautiful cross stitcher, but she is so easy to listen to. Um, I, I love her designs that she creates and I, I'm looking forward to watching all of her videos. Um, I've watched about three or four of them and so I'm going to go back and that's usually what I do is I'll watch three or four of the most recent um, videos and then when I have time I go back to the beginning and binge watch all of the, um, well unless there's 200 of them, but I usually go back and, and binge watch um, as many as I can. So check out those three floss tubers and um, I'll have more to share with you next week. So, all right, it's time to go to giveaways. And before I do that, I wanna thank you all for your comments. Um, I asked last week if you had 
um, the opportunity to meet any cross stitch designer, who would it be? And you all had so many um, comments and so many um, ideas and people you'd like to meet for different reasons. And we can all agree that all of these designers that we have the pleasure of seeing their designs, we are very fortunate to have so many talented designers at our fingertips and a click away if we don't have a store nearby. Um, so thank you designers, you are all wonderful. We, um, you're the reason we love this, this, this um, artwork. Um, everybody has something different and, and you're all wonderful. So, um, thank you all for answering those questions. So, for the giveaways from last week, I had five things to give away. So, before we go through all this, um, like the video, be a subscriber, and comment below with the answer to the question I give you. And use the number one, two, three, or four, whatever the, the number is that you want, use that number in your answer. Please do not use the word giveaway um, in your comment. Um, but like the video, subscribe to the channel, and leave your comment. Okay, so from last week, I had five giveaways. And the first one is Basket of Eggs by Shakespeare's Peddler goes to Crafting Christie. Kirsty, sorry, Crafting Kirsty. All of you, please email me um, at thepropersticher at gmail.com. I'll put that below as well. I'll get these out to you as soon as possible. Um, and if I'm already out of town by the time I get your information, I'll, I'll have it all ready to go. Maybe my husband will be kind enough to go to the mailbox for me or the post office for me. If not, I'll do it as soon as I get back. Um, okay, Stacy Nash Primitives Red Work Sewing Book. This goes to Janet Duchette, and Janet, I'm going to spell your name. It's D-O-U-C-E-T-T-E. -T -T -E. So, Janet, number two. Number three is When Flowers Bloom by Brenda Gervais with Thy Needle and Thread. And this is Lana McQuaid. Lana McQuaid. Number four is Scattered Seed Samplers, Mary Wood, 1837. And this goes to Lily and the letter K. So Lily K. And then the I had two of these. This is the 2016 Prairie Schooler Santa. And this goes to Suzanne Smith. Suzanne Smith. So you all just email me. Um, when you can, and I'll get this in the mail to you. All right, so this week I have I have five giveaways again. Um, some of these are um, gifts from a, a viewer, and some are um, gifts from my stash. So here we go. The question you're going to answer this week is, how many whips do you have? So how many works in progress do you have? Nobody is going to judge you if you have one <laughs> because we know that we all have more than one and nobody's going to judge you if you have a hundred. So however many you have, I'm curious to know and then we'll compare notes next week and see who has the most. So here we go. Answer that below. How many whips do you have? Number one, so you answer that question. Number one is Rooster by Lucy Bean. Rooster. Number two is Blackbird Designs Garden Club Series number eight. So that's number two. Number three is Boo to You by Brenda Gervais with thy needle and thread. This would be so cute for Halloween. It's almost time to start stitching for Halloween. So that's number three. Number four is Shakespeare's Peddler Antiques Locks and Keys. And I actually have a collection of keys, a big bag full of antique keys. And I will add an antique key to this one. So that's number four. And number five 
is Threadwork Primitives Give Thanks. And that's number five. So that is um, all the giveaways for this week. Thank you all for subscribing to my channel. I have, I am 50 subscribers away from 3,000. So I know that I know by the time I go to Indiana to all those needlework stores that I will have, hopefully I'll have 3,000 subscribers by then. Thank you so much for sharing my channel with your friends, for telling people about it, for liking it and commenting it and helping it, helping my, my videos get to to the, the top of the feed for some people who are looking for new channels. So once I reach 3,000, I will have a big giveaway for that, and I'll find something special at these cross-stitch stores um, when I go to Indiana. But thank you again, all of you, so much for giving me that love and giving me your attention and your time and your, and your cross-stitch attention um, and your quilting attention. So I really appreciate it. I am, I am having so much fun, and I hope you're having fun with me. Um, enjoy your Father's Day weekend. Um, I know we have a lot planned. Um, my husband has decided what we're eating. <laughs> um, we're gonna we're gonna enjoy um, eating outside. It's supposed to uh, be nice weather. Um, we're gonna grill and just make it a day about him because I have been blessed with a wonderful husband and he is a wonderful father to our children. And so I am looking forward to celebrating him this weekend. So enjoy your weekend, enjoy your cross-stitch time, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you.